Hello and welcome to this edition of Assembly Calendar. I'm Ad Vischer. Our guest today is New York State Assemblyman Mike Norris. Mike represents the 144th Assembly District of Erie, Niagara, and Orleans County. Thank you very much for joining us today. This is the Assemblyman's show, first show since uh, the marathon budget passage, which uh, took place on April 1st, went into the wee hours of Monday morning, but it was passed on time. So we're going to bring people up to speed on that, sir. Yes, I mean... Nice to see you. Nice to see you always, and thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. I always love uh, re reporting back to my constituents. I think it's a very important a part of the position, uh, being your, the assemblyman out of Western New York. Uh, you know, the bottom line is, is this budget, quite frankly, is a complete disaster. It is an attack uh, on the hardworking taxpayers of upstate New York. Uh, it, it is $175. A point four billion dollars that amounts to about ten thousand uh, dollars per New Yorker when you think about that and uh, I remember working as a young staffer for Assemblyman David Seaman back in the 90s when I was in college the budget then was 55 billion why is that tripled in in uh, just 20 years um, the, the bottom line is is that we have lost 1 million people since 2010 out of the state and they're being driven out because of high taxes and the lack of good paying jobs. That's why I'm very proud to say that I voted against every single budget bill because uh, we need to stand up and say enough is enough of this tax and spend uh, mentality, particularly uh, when the leadership um, is downstate. I mean, the governor is from downstate, the Senate president is from downstate, as well as the Speaker of the Assembly. And, and the majorities are from downstate, and that has been their main focus. Uh, a couple of things I just want to point out is that budgets are about priorities, um, whether it be in your household, your business, government. Um, it's about where do you want to spend the dollars necessary. I've been a very uh, strong proponent of making sure we place uh, dollars, uh, much needed resources, into our infrastructure system, our roads and our bridges and our culverts. I mean, that's very critical as we need to move people around. It's important for our economy. It's important when businesses actually look to uh, develop or keep jobs, particularly out in Western New York. And the other part is education. We need to make sure we make this investment in our future. And uh, those are the two areas in particular. Now, <laughs> in this budget, there were some dramatic cuts on the people of Western New York. One, the extreme winter recovery funds. That is a $65 million, uh, which was allocated in the past couple budgets for roads and bridges. We've had very difficult winters, and the local municipalities use these funds to actually uh, fill those potholes and, and take action. <clears throat> the governor and the majorities downstate ripped it out of the budget, and those funds did not make it into the final passage. I, I am very upset about that. I'm disgusted by that. These local uh, communities rely on these funds, and uh, they were ripped away. Uh, the other thing is about CHIPS funding. CHIPS funding has been steady at $438 million since 2013-14. The CHIPS funding is uh, a portion out of uh, the diesel tax and other places uh, uh, within the state budget where these dollars go back into our local roads and uh, for our municipalities. Very critical. But it's remained flat since 2013, and again, there was no increase there. I want to mention uh, one more thing in particular, and that's our library system. Um, <coughs> in upstate New York, we rely heavily uh, on <coughs> our libraries. They serve as the local hub of our communities, particularly because we don't have broadband service in our rural communities in many parts of them, which, mm -hmm. by the way, is another disaster. And that needs to, that is like, like almost a, a fundamental right now, right. like water and sewer and electricity, to have access to broadband services because even our farmers rely to, to do their daily business. Our children who are in these, uh, in these homes um, rely on uh, broad, need to have broadband to do their schoolwork assignments. Uh, but anyways, uh, that's, a, that's for another topic, and I continue to work hard on behalf of the people of Western New York to fight uh, for that broadband services to every household. But our libraries uh, are a hub for that broadband service, and the construction funding of $20 million, again, was ripped out of this budget. They had it in last year's budget. And you would think that many folks may say, oh, these construction funding is to build brand new libraries. But no. 
These are just to repair and to restore our basic libraries. If the boiler breaks, they can apply for a grant. If the windows need or the roofs need to be replaced, they can apply for a grant. That's why these construction dollars are so critical mm -hmm. uh, and it's so important. Again, ripped out of the budget. I'm very disappointed in that uh, because upstate um, is definitely uh, taking the blunt of this budget. Speaking of that, AIM funding, uh, that's another thing. Uh, it's, it's for our local municipalities to provide basic services within the community. You know, we're taxpayers and we put in uh, our dollars into the state budget. So these are the things that we can get back, um, back into our local communities and our local investments. Well, there was such an outcry after the budget, uh, after the governor took $59 million out of his proposed budget in January. Many of my municipalities uh, passed resolutions that urged them, uh, him to restore that. So he did restore it, but what did he do? He actually took the $59 million and now is telling the counties that that will have to come out of the county's portion of the sales tax and not the state side of the sales tax. So basically, it's just a shell game. And again, it was another uh, $59 million uh, taken out of the state budget and shifted uh, to local municipalities to handle, in that case, the counties to give back to local municipalities. But th we pay dollars into the state budget. The people of Western New York deserve to make sure uh, we have our fair share. Uh, we have parity across the state of New York. And that's uh, something that I'm disappointed about. I'm, I feel bad reporting it back to my constituents, but I want uh, the folks to know back home that I was very proud to stand up and to vote no on every budget bill because this assault and this attack on upstate New York taxpayers and the tax and spend mentality of downstate uh, New York uh, has got to stop. And so I'm proud to say I voted no on behalf of the people of Western New York. And I also voted no on the 40% tax increase for Governor a Andrew Cuomo. Well, a lot of information there. Yes. <laughs> you shared. I hope uh, everyone at home was writing it down. <laughs> um, the uh, budget uh, fails to provide funding for uh, direct care workers, uh, salary increases as well. Yeah, this is another thing that's uh, very important to me. I have been a, a strong advocate for our Be Fair to Direct Care workers. <clears throat> you know, uh, in the past, uh, the New York State Legislature uh, did increase the minimum wage on fast food workers to $15 an hour. Now, I'm not uh, going to say that they don't work hard, and, and, that, and that's certainly fine. Now, I believe that these, these uh, increases, uh, particularly on small businesses, are having an adverse effect on our economy. I mean, now you go to Burger King or McDonald's and you hardly ever talk to a person. You have to go to a tablet or to a system and punch it into what you want. Uh, so I think, I think that some of these increases and these mandates on small businesses are actually, actually having an adverse effect on customer service. However, the Be Fair to Direct Care workers, these individuals help those with developmentally disabled disabilities, with physical disabilities, they help the most vulnerable in our community, and there's been little action to actually make that a parity uh, for the fast food workers. Many of them are making right around 12.09 an hour, 12.27 an hour. I've been at many of the, the rallies. These folks uh, deserve to have a fair wage uh, for the work that they do. And uh, I'm very proud to say I was in a rally uh, <clears throat> in the war room on the second floor with many of the advocates, many of the uh, direct service professionals advocating to make sure we have parity. Now, there were very small steps uh, taken in this budget to, uh, to provide a very uh, small increase, but it doesn't take effect until like January 1st of 2020. So <clears throat> this has to be uh, a greater focus in the upcoming uh, session and the session, as well as into next year's budget negotiation. Because to be fair to direct care is very, very important. These folks take care of uh, our most vulnerable in our community, and they deserve to have a fair and adequate wage for the work that they do. A lot of good information there, uh, and certainly we'll stay tuned uh, uh, with uh, the remaining months of session here for uh, 2019. Uh, Talk to us about some of the events taking uh, place back home in the district. Sure. I think, uh, first of all, I want to just mention that uh, April is Donate for Life Month. And uh, you can tell I have my 
green band here to promote. I need to get myself one of those. Well, and we will, I, sure, I have an extra one on my desk. I'll make sure we Excellent. get one for you. Uh, because it's critically important. You know, in New York, out of uh, all the states and two territories, we are 51st out of 52 uh, for organ, or, organ and tissue donations. We are at the bottom of the pile. But the, the, on the flip side, we're the third state at the top in need of organ and tissue donations. So it is very critical uh, that I, uh, that I, and I'm very proud to, to be a part of this awareness campaign, to have individuals uh, please donate uh, for life. And we have the website there on oh, the address. That's fan uh, Thank you very website much. Website address on the screen there for you. And go to the donatelife.ny.gov uh, website and register. I have to tell you, I did it. It's very simple. You put in for information. It takes no, no more than five minutes, and you'll be done. You'll be registered. You'll get a confirmation in the mail. Um, and your donation will actually help, believe it or not, uh, up to eight families or individuals <coughs> um, for organ donations. And then in terms of eye and tissue donations, up to 75 families. So that's one person who donates can actually help eight individuals in terms of organ donation and up to 75 for eye and tissue donation. So I think uh, it's, I just want to make sure I, I broadcast this to my constituents. It's something that uh, my colleagues, especially Assemblyman Phil Palmasano, is very passionate about. We have passed some legislation to, to help and encourage Donate for Life, but please, uh, Go to the website, it's on the bottom of the screen there, and I encourage you to please register. Now, quick question on sure. that. Um, when I registered, I registered at DMV. Can, are you still able to do that? Yes, you can. Your driver's license? Yep, you can okay. do it right on DMV, and you, and you can do it you do, through your driver's license. You can also go on that website, and uh, it's very easy to do so. So Good I to encourage know. all my constituents to please do that. You know, in terms of uh, moving on now to uh, the spring coming up and the fishing warmer season, weather. warmer weather is very, very exciting. You know, after the winter that we had, I'm very proud to represent four towns along the southern shore of Lake Ontario. And uh, every year I sponsor a boater safety course. And this is an eight hour course, uh, which you have to take. This year it's going to be held on Tuesday, May 14th and uh, to, uh, Thursday, May 16th from 5 to 9 p.m. Now you have to go to both sessions because it's an eight hour course. It's held at the Niagara County Public Safety Building, which is right next to the county jail on Niagara Street Extension. And if you'd like to register for this course, and if you have any jet skis, it's, it is a mandate, it's a requirement that you do it. I actually uh, did have to take the boater safety course myself. It's very uh, good to do. You learn a lot of things, and the Niagara County Sheriff's Department does an excellent job. You can contact the Sheriff's Department at 716 Four three eight three three four six. That's seven one six four three eight three three four six to register for that course. I encourage you to please do so. Um, another thing I just want to mention while we have some time is that about a minute and a half left. Of oh, the show. Okay, boy, we we went through very quickly. Oh, yes. A lot of information it moves to pass. Fast. It does. <laughs> uh, is uh, is our is a survey. I'm very proud to always uh, so, uh, sponsor a, a legislative survey, uh, and this year we've done that. The response has been tremendous. I've already received over 500 uh, responses from this survey. You can go on to my assembly website, which I know you put on it up at the end of the show, uh, and you, there's a link there to please fill out my legislative survey. I, I actually t read them, I read all your comments on them, and I take this information so I know what you're thinking so I can make sure I do the best job possible as your representative. And one more thing, as we head, to, believe it or not, towards Memorial Day in spring, um, I'm going to have a first annual this year, a poster contest for our high school uh, students from the grades of 9 through 12 on what it means uh, to you for Memorial Day, that freedom is not free. And so we're sponsoring a poster contest. Uh, you can get more information on that on my website or also by calling my office at 716 839 Four six nine one. That's seven one six eight three nine four six nine one. And uh, I encourage any uh, high school uh, student to please participate. Um, and then we're going to uh, take the, uh, the the posters and have local veterans actually uh, judge them to pick the best ones. Excellent. Yes. Great. That sounds good. Thank you, sir. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thank, and you, thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. As always. If you'd like to reach out to the assemblyman, he's available on social media. Be the, be sure to search for him there. Thank you very much for joining us today. We will see you next time.